I'm joined by the Barn Cat Tandem McCrory here on the program. He's coming off a big win at UFC on Fox 17 against Josh the Man. Tandem, how are you? I'm living, man. Finally made it home last night and uh, still have it unpacked, but, you know, media obligations, right? Yeah, yeah, no worries, and I appreciate you taking the time here. Uh, how was the trek back uh, to, to New York? I don't do well with uh, traffic and rental cars and uh, big crowds and uh, baggage overages, so it was horrible. And then, of course, the plane ride was just, like, bumpy as all hell. Everybody was literally, like, you, people were, like, hanging out, and then all of a sudden we'd hit a spot. Everybody's hanging on to whatever and stuff, so I was like, man. <sighs> then I got to get home, get off the plane, and then I'd drive another hour and a half to get home. So it was it was a long, long trip, but um, I'm hoping – you know, at some point I'll be able to relax before I die, but you know, it's not looking promising. Was it was it like planes, trains, and automobiles? It was something like that, man. It was okay. it was obscene. Still obscene. I got up first thing this morning, take my daughter to school. Been running around ragged, but uh, I'm hoping I'm, I'm hoping to relax. Good thing there's Christmas coming up. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Then there's like a real excuse for you don't have to do a damn thing, right? Let's talk about the fight. Uh, you know, obviously the first round was competitive, but uh, you just took over as the fight went on. Um, did you kind of feel like he was going to tire out uh, later on in the fight? Was that part of the game plan? You know, I I I, I know that I I I was going to be tired because I was going to be working. You know, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't. I wasn't going to be tired because I was out of shape. Um, I mean, the funny thing, we my, we had a joke the whole camp. And this is, I mean, maybe, I, I don't know how Josh feels. Maybe he's got bad blood or something like that. He don't like me, whatever. I don't care. I'm not really concerned about what he thinks. But uh, the thing that we always were laughing about is because he said a bunch of, like a couple of interviews, someone was telling me that they was commenting on how I, I don't have a very good physique. Right. And I'm like, what does having a good physique have to be have to do with beating someone's ass? You know what I'm saying? Right, like, I I don't need to be out of granite to knock your teeth in. Mm -hmm. So that was like the funny thing. We were like, you know, I don't know, man. I don't have a very good physique, so I don't know how I'm gonna do in this fight. You know, I better should have done more crunches. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, I I I'm known for having a pace that breaks people. So. Uh, if that had anything to do with it, you know, great. It's just another, another thing that I, that I do, you know? Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, in your post-fight speech, uh, you mentioned you were happy to get the win, but, uh, you know, you weren't uh, happy about your performance. What were some of the things that uh, you didn't like about, uh, about the fight? Everything. I don't know. I mean, the result, yeah, you know, the result was good. You know, I got a finish. You know, it took me a lot longer than I wanted to. Uh, you know, for that, I'm humble. I have some humility. For that, I have to say, Josh was a very tough competitor. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He, he put it on me. The, nothing that I got in that fight was easy. So I have to set my hat to him for that, you know. At the same time, you know, I look at myself and I look at what I do in the gym and I look what I know what I'm capable of. And I look to myself and I say, you know, Tim, you didn't you didn't do what you you didn't do what you could do. You didn't do what you're capable of. You know what I'm saying? And I'm 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 very hard on myself and that's what I'm known for. And I'm very like. I I take everything. It's on me. You know, right. it doesn't matter. A win, a loss is on me. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? How I perform is on me. It has nothing to do with my opponent, you know. Um, it has everything to do with, with, with what I'm doing. And and I didn't perform in a manner that I – I mean, I'm I'm proud. The good thing is I've, I fought through difficulty. I fought through adversity. You know, I had a real challenge, you know what I'm saying? It was a challenging fight, and I had to fight back from, you know, you know, I would have given him that first round easy. But uh, I had to fight back, you know, and that's what it is. It's called a fight. It's not called killing. It's called fighting. You know what I'm right. saying? So, yeah. <laughs> and I think that that might have been a good thing to show and, and display to the UFC brass and let them know, hey, you know, it wasn't, yeah, you know, the biggest thing I didn't want to happen and the reason why it was like a nerve wracking experience because I was like, I can't, I can't afford to lose this, not only financially, 
but I can't afford to lose because that just everybody's going to look at that and say, oh, man, he should have stayed in Bellator. You know what I'm right. saying? He's just not cut for UFC. And that's not, definitely not the case. And I, and I think that having that, that tough, you know, fight is, is something that showed that, you know. And, you know, he's, he's judging by his record and his press performances, he's, he's a tough competitor and he's, he's got a lot of good wins. I mean, he's, I think every fight that he's had in UFC so far, he's finished. And right. I was able to uh, negate his game. I mean, I played, that's one of the big things too. You know, I'm sorry, I'm jumping all over. No, no, no him, worries. But, Jump away, man. Um, I, the, I played, I, I'm very much a go with the flow type of guy. Mm-hmm. And maybe I shouldn't be. I felt that like one of the things looking back on the fight, cause I watched it that night and I couldn't sleep, but um, I, I was like, I, I, I didn't pick a game plan and stick to it. I kind of just jumped around on what I was going to do. You know, I was going to ground a pound. I was going to sub him. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, for that, that I let him get away with, I let him get more credit than he, I should have given him. You know what I'm saying? Like I let him get away with things that I probably should have negated and, and played, played my game. But I mean, it goes to show you, I can, I can do it all. You know, I, it's just a matter of finding where I'm, I have the strength and they have the weakness or if even if they have the strength, I got to be a little bit stronger. Absolutely. And man, you got the submission win at the end of the day. It was an incredible performance. Uh, you know, like you mentioned, all, all types of things happen in the fight. Uh, the one thing I got to talk about though, post fight, you jump over the cage, you give Rogan the high five. Was that something you planned or did that just kind of happen spontaneously? No, I mean, it just kind of happened spontaneously. I was, I mean, I'm known for kind of losing my mind when I, you know, I get pretty amped up. Yeah. I'm, it, the weird thing is everybody says is like I'm such an even keel like type of guy like I don't get excited I don't I don't hoot and holler too much like I'm really like you know just chill constantly but um when I get riled up man it's it's on I mean yeah. it's, it's going you know so um you know the whole thunder horse incident where I was on the mic and I was swearing, going nuts and and whatnot. You know I didn't want to have a repeat of that, which I'm glad that I didn't. You know I've gotten a little bit more wise in my my old age. You know, right. But um, yeah, I saw Joe Rogan, and plus the, one of the things that was funny is it was like two or three years ago he was on the Joe Rogan podcast with Dana White, and um, they were talking about me. Right. And they're like, what about that nerd? Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's the barn cat. Yeah, Tanner Corey. He's like, dude, that dude's a bad motherfucker, man. And I was like, dude, they still remember me. It's sweet, you yeah. know? And then now it was cool to be back and be like, you remember that, dude? You know? And I asked him, I was like, you miss me yet? You know? And, and it, I was just amped up. And, you know, you get a little amped up. That high five adds a little more, you put a little more velocity on it. So uh, I hope he's all right. I hope he's not mad at me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> But you mentioned something interesting there. You know, you have a pretty big following. I, I don't know if you're aware, but, uh, you know, just the, the hardcores that have seen you fight, you know, you've got a very unique personality and, and your fight style is obviously very appealing. Um, I'm sure after this fight, you got a lot of uh, positive messages and encouragement, uh, you know, th- you know, congratulating you on the victory. Uh, was there one message that kind of stood out from the most? Um, I... I... The after there was a lot. I mean, I, I I totally appreciate all the love and support that the fans have been giving me. I mean, my phone goes off still to today, constantly every twenty minutes. You know what I'm saying? I, and um, so that I, I am thankful for the the probably um some of the the ones that stand out the most are um you know I mentioned in my post fight interview about my friend Jared who had passed away. And some of his relatives on Facebook asked me for, like, do you have the link to what, what you said? And I was like, I don't even know what I said. But, I mean, you know, here's how I feel about the guy. And and so it was cool to kind of connect with those people. And most people were very thankful of what I said about him. And then um, probably the one the one that stuck out to me the most, and now it's so far deep in my message list that I'll probably never find it again. But um, an old – student of mine because i i trained trained out of a little gym in Portland years back and he uh what was it he sent me an email and he was like you know it's it's it truly is like a 
inspirational story, like what you've gone through and how you're still finding success and building success, um, even after all the adversity that you've been through. And he had fallen off the beaten path and, and had some issues with addiction. And he was like, I look at you as like a, like a rock, you know, like you're an example that, you know, I can get through this and you're like the everyman fighter, you know, like, I don't, I don't have the physique. I don't look like this guy. I don't look like that guy, but through and through I'm a fighter nonetheless. So I think that probably is what, that was, that was very cool to see, hear someone say that to me and, and be like, you know, I'm just some guy that you go and drink beers and you watch on a Saturday night knocking someone's head in, you know, for, for a lot of people, they're going to say, Hey, he's cool and forget me. But people like that are the ones that you make the biggest mark on. And that's what, that's, that's where you go beyond just like being some famous guy where I made money and I got, you know, whatever Rolls Royces and whatever, but to, I'm literally making an impact on some people's lives that maybe wouldn't have been there if I hadn't have accomplished or done the things that I've done. That's great, man. That's, that's awesome to hear. Um, how'd you celebrate after the fight? Um, I went and got a cheeseburger nice. and, uh, I mean, actually I was a little, I was, well, after the fight, they had the green room. So we went and had the snack and some ice cream and that was all good and gravy. And, uh, I went right up in the stands and I found my, uh, wife and my daughter and gave them a big hug and saw some of my family while I was up there. And, and then all my students, I mean, I live in Binghamton, New York, and he had like probably at least 30 people from up here that either bought plane tickets or drove down to see me fight. And I got to just hang out with those people and say, Hey, and give them hugs and thank them for coming. And, um, I mean, I, I probably would have gone out, but I was, you know, I, I earned that fight. I was a little banged up to be honest. So, I went back and one of my guys who's an acupuncturist and a master of oriental medicine did some work on me to try and loosen up some of my, my bumps and bruises. And to be honest, I was just totally like exhausted. So I went and had a cheeseburger. And by the time that was over, it was like two o'clock in the morning. And I was like, there's no way I'm drinking alcohol. You know, I think I had one drink with my, my burger and I was like, dude, I don't have the energy for this. Absolutely. I also knew I had to get up early in the morning because uh, my mother-in-law was leaving and we wanted to go say bye to her before she hit her flight. So uh, there wasn't really any partying. Um, uh, I'm not really, uh, you, I got kids, dude, you know, right. <laughs> you can't really get. You, you don't, you don't strike me as the type who's uh, going to a club and popping bottles and things like that, you know? No, nah, I mean, I'm more the type of guy that I'll just sit there and kick it with people that I know. And, and, yeah. you know, tonight, if, you know, I, I'm teaching classes. I got, I literally have like back to back, like I got you and like three other interviews this afternoon. And then I go to go to my gym and I got my kids and my youth program. I'm promoting with the belt ceremony. And then I got my adult classes and then I got the, the local media. I got like three or four TV stations coming down to do those interviews. But then after all that, I'm probably going to go out and have a few wings tonight. Cause I told my guys in my, my Thai boxing class that, um, you know, when I got done, I'd come back and would go get some wings after class, which I probably isn't like the most healthy thing for a coach to be doing. But I mean, it's well deserved. What? Yeah. Exactly. Well, every once in a while, it's all right. It's not like I'm going to wings every class, you know what I'm saying? Right. Of but, course. Of course. Yeah. You got you got to indulge a little bit in life. Am I, am I right? So there, there you go. Um, I won't keep you too much longer here. I know you're a busy guy. Um, you know, as far as uh, what's next and when you want to return to fighting, uh, do you sort of have a timetable for that or, or are you just going to kind of take it as it goes? Um, you know, Joe offered me a fight, but it was just too soon for me. I, there was a lot, I, I trained hard for this, this fight. You know, I spent a lot of time. I mean, I had been training, never really stopped training. And, uh, I, I picked up a lot of bumps and bruises and, and nagging pains along the way going into this fight. Right. Um, a lot of things that were concerning to me and, uh, you know, I was talking with my trainer and he was like, you just need to take like at least two weeks and don't do a damn thing. Like, just right. don't do anything. Don't train. Like, if you want to roll a little bit, roll a little bit. But no, nothing hard, nothing live, nothing crazy, no lifting, no nothing. Just let your body deload because I haven't really let my body deload since. Okay. You know, I went, I went on vacation in March and... I mean, I've been training ever since, so it's wow. some some weeks harder than others. 
others, but just never really that whole like let your body decompress and deload. And that's what um, it was suggested to me for the next two weeks at least. And then uh, I'd like to fight again before um, uh, before the next child comes. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll take it as it comes. I can't really decide what when I fight. I gotta go with what the UFC has for me. So hopefully, it might be March, April, and okay. depending how I feel. And, but I, I definitely want to stay active. And like I said in my previous interviews, momentum is hard to build. And now that I got it, I don't want to. I don't want to take too much time off and lose it. You know. Absolutely. What uh, what fight were you offered? I don't know. I can't remember. It was like January or something. Oh, it was he asked me the- about it. He asked me about a date in January. I said that it was that was just too soon. I mean, I'd have to be training right now today, and I right. I can't even bed can't even roll out of bed too quick, you know. So I'm I'm like I said, I gotta I gotta do I gotta heal, and like I said, I you know nobody goes into a fight 100. percent There's always you know how far power far below 100 percent can we perform at our best at, and uh, I want to get at least up a little bit before I get back into a full swing training camp and, and preparing for the next opponent. Absolutely. Just uh, two more questions for you here. Uh, Christmas shopping. Have you got it all done or you still have to go and get some more gifts? I haven't done a damn thing. So uh, luckily my fight first clears on the 24th. So Christmas Eve is when I'll have money to go blow on gifts. But I don't know. I, I'm i not a very material uh, person, person? Yeah. you know. Oh, I, I don't really want. There are things that I need. There's things that I need that I should buy for myself, but I won't buy them because I don't like spending money. You understand right. what I'm saying? Totally. I'm like an old man. You know, I need someone else to buy me socks and underwear because I'd just be like, I'm not spending the money on that, you know? But, um, I, I, you know, obviously I'm going to get uh, some gifts for my, for my family and some, some of my close friends. But, uh, I, to be honest, dude, I don't really want anything for Christmas. I don't want people to give me anything. Really what I enjoy is the pleasure of people's company. You know, um, and uh, I have a lot of friends that I haven't seen or I, I don't see because, you know, it's funny because a lot of the people that I hang out with, the majority of people that I hang out with are people that are into fighting or martial arts or have something to do with my business ventures. And that's just we have, we're like minded. We're always around each other. We hang out the most. But I have a lot of friends who you know, have kids too and whatnot that have nothing to do with what I do. And those are the ones that I got to, I have, now I have the break. Now I have to go right. nurture those relationships because those are people that have all been important to me as well. So, um, those are the people that I'm going to try and spend some time with. And, and, and that's, that's the pleasure of, of, of the how I don't really need, you know, there, there are things that I want, but, at the end of the day, roof over my head. I got a car that gets me to and fro, and and uh, I got food in the fridge. So everything else, just hang out and maybe maybe drink a few beers. I might try to there do that. I can't way. do it like I and I got old. I can't I can't stomach it. You know, I drink yeah. about three of them. I'm already yakking. So I uh, I've been too healthy for too long. That's the problem. You get if you're if you're really just drinking constantly, you can drink no matter what. If you're really healthy. And you're really healthy but if you try to do either one of those like you get really you drinking all the time then you try to act healthy your body feels like crap and then if you're really healthy all the time you try drinking a little bit your body feels like crap you got to pick one or the other man it's hard to be, be in the middle there you go not just answering questions here on the show also giving some nice health tips i like it uh my last question for you here what is your favorite christmas movie oh gosh um i don't I can't really say that I have a favorite Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. You know what? Really, what I have is, like, I love the memories of, like, growing up as a kid. Yeah. And, like, sitting on the living room floor with my with my sister or maybe my cousins. And um, watching, like, waiting for the TV because you knew, like... CBS is showing uh, Frosty the Snowman on Thursday night at 7 on whatever date. And you'd be like, oh, man, it's coming up. Because that was before all this streaming crap where you could just get instant gratification whenever you wanted it. You actually had to wait for something, God forbid. Right. And I just remember that, like, joy of, like, waiting and then, like, oh, man, that movie came on and being able to watch it. And 
and see it with my family. But, you know, like Frosty, the, there was like an animated Frosty the Snowman. I think it had John Goodman with the voice. And um, I can't remember. I remember that one. I loved it. And then obviously like the good old, like the, whatever the, um, like the Rudolph and those, those old classics, you know, those are the ones to watch, you know, my daughter. Now, now the new one is, uh, uh, curious George Christmas, whatever that one is. Okay. Dude, I watch that thing year round and it doesn't matter (laughs) when my, my daughter has the Netflix and she knows how to work it and she'll pull up. I want to watch George. She pulls up that George Christmas movie. So I've seen that one about a million times. There you go. Getting your fair share of Christmas stuff. Well, Tandem, I really appreciate you joining me here on the program. Congratulations again on the win. I just remind my audience where they can find you on social media and give any thank yous or shout outs. The floor is yours. Well, I got to thank my manager, Jimmy Ben, because when I wasn't having much going for me, he still had faith in me. And, and here we are. Now we're climbing to the top and I got to I got to appreciate him and enjoy him. Um, my coaches uh, from Syracuse at Taikai Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, Ken Cronenberg, Dennis Segru, and the rest of the black belts up there that really uh, pushed me to, you know, really up my game. And obviously now that shows my second time around. Uh, and then uh, Kevin Seaman, who's my striking coach, he's been with me for since day one. He's also my mental performance coach. Joseph Yaman, uh, uh, Ye- it's Yeah Man Athletics, um, like literally how it sounds, Yeah Man Athletics. Uh, he's the one that uh, put me through. Uh, we were did what did we do like 14 weeks of strength training or something crazy like that and uh josh said in his post fight interview is the biggest strongest guy he's ever fought and you know that can only be attributed to to joey um and then uh you know i have to thank my family and everybody like that you guys can uh, catch me on social media which is uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all the Barn Cat MMA, I believe is my handle. And um, and then probably, you know, everybody that knows that I appreciate them hears it from me anyways. You know, I see them all the time. You know, my team, my manager, my training partners, um, and uh, – you know, all the people that still have faith and want to see some regular old jack off, you know, climb the ladder and do something decent with his receding hairline. But, um, you know, the, the, the biggest people that I got to thank right now um, are the uh, the O'Briens, Paul and Jen. There are two people that literally uh, just took me under their wing when I was down and out and, you know, invested in me and um, both, you know, financially and you know spiritually emotionally mentally they've been my the people that i talk to on a daily basis uh they're like they're like my second set of parents and uh been me and my family and they've taken good care of us so um if uh you guys ever ever think about who's behind the cat you know it's it's them they, they've really taken me from helped me lick my wounds and get back up on my feet and and now we're climbing that ladder 